Party on, Sal. Rock on. Rock on. Well, welcome, most excellent Party on John casters, to another episode, the one-year most excellent episode anniversary of the Party on John cast. Woo! Yay! <laughs> one year. One year. Can you believe that we is, survived a year? I can't believe it's already been a year. <laughs> Time, <laughs> time flies when you're having fun. It does. Uh, I was thinking all of the all of the the our listeners wouldn't necessarily know this, but all of the the work that goes on, you know, into putting these together, uh, the, the time, time, the sweat, the, the blood, energy, the struggles, <laughs> the struggles, the nights on the couch, nights on the couch <laughs> for sure. Um, well, this is uh, Reverend mm-hmm. Sal Marco, a uh, ordained teaching elder in the Presbytery of Newton in the Presbyterian Church USA in the Validated Ministry of Chaplaincy. And uh, this is Todd Laddick. I am an ordained elder in the United Methodist Church, um, in the United Methodist Church of Greater New Jersey, serving a congregation in Newton, New Jersey, on higher ground than Sal. It's the only higher ground I give them. Short of divine providence. Damn right. <laughs> Well, one year. One year. And one year of drinking coffee. So I guess that brings us to our Hebrews segment. Hey, Todd, for the 12th time, (laughs) how do you know that God loves coffee? How, Sal? You wrote about it in the book of Hebrews. Every time. (laughs) Every time. Never gets old. Never gets old. Except it does, but it doesn't. (laughs) And if it is getting old... Tough. Tough. <laughs> you got at least another year of it. Because <laughs> that's what we renewed the uh, website for. That's, <laughs> yeah, that's right. Um, so we're going we're gonna to ride that one out as long as we can. So uh, what are we drinking today, Todd? Well, Sal, uh, we both opted for our most favorite uh, coffee, not. not. <laughs> our favorite place to, uh, to, to knock on and... Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, except today I'm not going to knock on them. So we we went to uh, we went to uh, Dunkin' Donuts and we got the fire and ice versions of uh, the same thing. So I got a uh, a medium uh, hot latte with uh, sugar free French vanilla and almond milk. Mm. Mm. And I got a iced iced medium latte uh, with just skim milk, no no uh, shots of anything, just. Plain old, just plain old latte. I mean, actually, I am, I am pleasantly surprised that uh, their lattes taste rather good. Yeah, you know, their their um, espresso drinks are pretty decent. Um, I still think you're best paying for what you get at Starbucks than you are at Dunkin', which, by the way, to break all myths, is no cheaper than no Starbucks. Cheaper. Um, but. You're better off at Starbucks, but I will say that if you're going to get anything at Dunkin' Donuts, get their espresso drinks. Their macchiatos, their lattes, their cappuccinos—they're all—they're all fairly decent. Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, and almond milk is a little-known fact, unless you drink it. Uh, almond milk is actually sweetened, so if you get the latte with uh, no sugar added and you just get the almond milk, it sweetens it a little bit, and then you can get like whatever flavoring, sugar-free flavoring you want. And it's a minimal calor- oh, caloric uh, drink as opposed to a super caloric drink, depending on <laughs> how you how you like your poison. That's right. Awesome. Yeah. So so here's to a year's worth of Dunkin' Donuts. Cheers. Cheers. You probably didn't hear that, so we'll do it again. There, there we go. go. There we go. <laughs> you can at least get your ice to make a noise. <laughs> we are nuts. <laughs> uh, nuts for the nutty, as my grandfather used to say. So, um, that is what we're drinking, which brings us to our most excellent music segment. Shocking every time. <laughs> yes. It's intense every time. Intense. I, I only have levels of like intense to super intense. There's nothing under intense with me, I don't think. Uh, if there is, call 911. <laughs> uh, so, so what are you listening to? Okay, so I've been, I've been um, 
really on and off of an Elton John kick. Uh, I just recently went to see uh, Rocket Man. Well, I shouldn't say recently. We went to see it the weekend it came out. Um, uh, my family and I, and you know, I mean, Elton's a living legend. He is uh, phenomenal uh, live. I- I've not unfortunately gotten to see him live, but I've seen you know uh, footage of him live. He- he's really just just a living legend. More hits than anybody could count. Um, and uh, just one of those long-lasting, enduring personalities that I think will uh, will forever be etched in in people's minds, even long after he's gone. So, um, and being it Pride Month, uh, I thought, you know what? Why not give a good shout out to Elton John? But I'm going to do something even a little different than that, okay? Because like, I, which which song from Elton John do you put up as your favorite Elton John song? I mean, that's that's kind of hard. I could go with uh, Circle of Life because. Uh, you know, Disney's coming out with their live action uh, Lion King, but we'll save that for another day. It's a good song. Uh, but I think what I'm going to to do is I'm still standing because when I was a young kid and watching, you know, grew up in the MTV generation there watching MTV, I remember that music video. It is about as pride happy as you can you could want in a video. I mean, it's just like very eclectic, very spontaneous, very flamboyant. proud, flamboyant. And uh, it is Elton at his best. I mean, it's just it's just Elton being Elton. Um, uh, and he actually looks a little more normal in that video than he does uh, in a lot of his other acts, you know, with like chicken suits and whatever else he might <laughs> might have on in any given occasion. But but the the video overall is to- totes flamboyant. flamboyant. Uh, and just like just, you know what? I've been through it all and I'm still standing and I won't say what Sal said in the previous episode, but uh, yeah, you can just, well, say it for me, Sal. Remind me what I said. Go f- Oh, f- <laughs> oh yeah, in relation to our shithouse theology. <laughs> that's, that's right. So, um, yeah, so I, I really kind of, I kind of dig that. And more importantly, I'm not sure how many people actually know this, but... Uh, it is the truth, 100% the truth, Sal, that um, that Taron Edgerton actually sang all of the songs for that movie. He didn't lip sync to John, Elton John's uh, voice. And I saw they actually just put a video of them singing together one of one of his songs. Yes, yes, and and Taron has a, I would say he has an Elton esque voice. But he has his own voice as well, and that comes through in, in the performance. You you can tell it's not Elton John singing, but because of the brilliance of the actor, uh, Taron Edgerton, and the brilliance of his voice, it becomes Elton John's voice just because it's just, it's just that good. Kind of like what Rami Malek did in um, Bohemian Rhapsody in relation to uh, Freddie Mercury, uh, though uh in that movie, they mix some of Rami's voice with some of Queen's voice with some of another third-party band's voice and blended it all together to make a final product. This is all 100% Taron Edgerton's voice. So, like, the film would either <laughs> rise or crash on his, on his voice, and it rises to the hilt. So that's that's it. And uh, in terms of lyrics, um, I love in this song, I'm Still Standing, uh did you or don't you know I'm still standing better than I ever did looking like a true survivor feeling like a little kid I'm still standing after all this time picking up the pieces of my life with without you on my mind uh anybody who um has been in in a, either a broken relationship or perhaps through hard times like like me growing up being bullied and stuff like that I remember um you know like people really getting on me and and you know thinking like I was never going to survive that period in my life and then looking back now and it's like they're not even they're not even a, a forethought let alone an afterthought and um yeah I'm still standing so I think they're very relatable lyrics yeah. they are I mean I I told when Todd said he went to see the movie I was like yeah not really feeling it you know I'm not a diehard fan of Elton John of course I if his hits come on the radio, I'm not going to turn it off, but I don't seek him out. So I was like, yeah, not really feeling it, but uh, you, 
it, his music has made an impact. You can't deny that. No, you can't deny it. And uh, sounds like you might have had a change of heart. I may have had a change of heart. <laughs> yes. Awesome. You won't regret it, I promise. Uh, okay. And if you haven't seen it, it's still in the theater um, uh, because it's just that kind of movie. So uh, go see it. So what are you reviewing, Sal? So I'm going to review, and this is uh, Todd and I have been trying for a while to get uh, an actual band that uh, approves of our review and lets us play their music. So I'm going to review a band called When Forever Ends. Yeah. Yeah. They're a band out of Waco, Texas. I believe, I read somewhere, I think, and hopefully they'll they'll correct us if we're wrong, but I read that they're not signed. They're officially unsigned, but they have a CD call out called um, Return to Your Rest. Return to Your Rest, yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, based out of Psalm 116. Um and so I actually found them because uh, their guitarist, Caleb, followed me on Instagram. Rock on, Caleb. <laughs> I was like, interesting. And he's a really good guitarist. And then the band followed me, so I was like, oh, cool. I don't know why they would follow me, but I was like, oh, yeah, the podcast. <laughs> well, hopefully they'll follow me now. I feel left out. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. Guys, go follow Pastor Todd. Um, so, yeah, and then I saw... Um, so they're metal core, metal core, um, a little heavier than most. Um, when I think of metal core, I think of screamo. I mean, that's what I used to call it back when mm-hmm. I worked at the record store, screamo. Like you can't, it's you got to really listen to understand what they're saying, mm-hmm. which is not a bad thing. Um, no, it's... but it it's very intense, very awesome, very heavy driven music. Uh, they are Christian. Um, if you hadn't guessed by. Um, Return to Your Rest, being based on the Psalms. But I uh, reached out to them when I saw um, Rob Houghton, I think is the pastor's name, who does a YouTube vlog. I think it, I hope it's okay we mention him. They, he reviewed uh, Breach the Borders, which is one of their songs. Mm. Um, and so I sent out a message on Instagram and said, hey guys, it was awesome, would you guys mind if we reviewed you on the podcast and they said no that would be awesome so then we're like um, hey can we play one of your songs on the podcast and they're like yeah Yeah. (laughs) so (laughs) so you guys um, really rock i'm just gonna say that so i think this. thank you for responding yeah uh, hopefully we can benefit each other and get you some exposure and get us some exposure and get more people into christian metalcore it's Um, where it's at that's where it's It's really it's really Um, is so what song? So they just released a video, an official video for uh, Sheep Among Wolves, mm. uh, based on, you know, Jesus says you will be sheep among wolves, yep. but, uh, you know, stand up, you know, remain blameless. Um, it's really heavy. I mean, they're, they're dr- Caleb is an awesome guitarist. I can only speak to that because he's the one member that follows me. So I see all of his videos of him playing and, uh, driving drums just kind of like the drums if i was to play it in my car because i have a subwoofer uh, i'm sure it would make my chest pound yeah that kind of drive yeah drum. <laughs> um but there's the <clears throat> i listening to the lyrics that caught my my attention is there's lyrics that says my body is a sacrifice i forgive the men who will kill me mm. when wow. i th- when i think of the kingdom to come what is one day of death Wow. Yeah. yeah, what is one day of death? Yep. And wow. it's like, as a chaplain, it's like, death is my business. So it's like... <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So... Yeah. It's pretty, like... They're not just screaming. They're actually singing about legit spiritual... That's profound. That's, things. like, really profound. I mean, you think about it. And Jesus says this, too, where he says, those who try to save their lives will surely lose it but those who lose their lives for my sake and for the gospel will gain Gain. eternal life we try to cling to like we try to cling to our lives so that we don't have that one moment of death and oftentimes we sell our souls in the process and what we end up doing is inheriting eternal death you know uh we, we not only die once but we die twice and that's eternal uh Rather than being willing to live our lives boldly for Christ, for Christ. and, and even if it costs us our death, it's just one moment. One moment. Oh, uh, what yeah. Am I, what am I to gain? What am I to gain if I lose my soul? Yeah, um, yeah. But I. So that's the theme of the song. And guys, you know, chime in and tell us what what your inspiration was. But it's definitely you get the sense of life 
life of for Christ is a sacrifice. Yeah, to live to live is Christ, to die is gain. Mm-hmm. Wow. Okay. Um, so there you have it, El- you have it. Elton and when forever and when forever ends. And I re- I really think uh, guys uh, don't know if uh, you can pull this off or what it takes to. Uh, to get the uh, right, you know, the the permission to cover a song, but I really think a screamo version of "I'm Still Standing" would totally rock. Be awesome. <laughs> and I, they're actually their their logo on you guys' logo on your your album cover is awesome. It's a, uh, um, essentially a modified. I'm guessing anchor looks like an anchor, but mm. it's when you know the letters of W F E, but in the shape of an anchor. Wow. Okay. It's pretty cool. Yeah. Cool. So why don't we take a take a minute and play the song? Yeah. Let's do that. Let's take a minute and we will uh, play the song. Yeah, it was really awesome. Um, I hope you guys dug it. Again, uh, all of the links are right in place uh, uh, in the episode notes, so check them out. Um, and basically, uh, that sums up our most excellent music segment. So what's next, Sal? So next is, uh, what? what's that smell, Todd? Um, oh, it's time for Shit House Theology. <laughs> Ooh, 
That stinks. That stinks. <laughs> okay, so what's on the menu? So, <laughs> aside from the obvious, <laughs> aside from the obvious, um, I thought we uh, we because this was a, a was trending recently on Twitter. Uh, Twitter seems to be where we get a lot of our shit house theology from recently. Yes, yes. But uh, I know that uh, with the. Um, should we should we name the denomination? Let's not, just okay. in case. But there was a very large denomination who recently had their annual meeting, and part of oh, that. What the heck? They're proud. Name them. Yeah. <laughs> oh, you know what? I'm sure. Okay. The the uh, Southern Baptist Convention. Yeah. Um, had their annual. Why not? It's what they believe. That the... it's what they believe. Yeah. So um, had their annual uh, meeting and. Part of the discussions were uh, women in ministry, mm. and more specifically, women pastors. Yeah, and, and I think the importance of naming the denomination also, because uh, I'll name mine on any given issue where we have bad theology, and I have in the past. Um, uh, I'm United Methodist, by the way. Mm-hmm. Uh, but <clears throat> um, there are women within the Southern Baptist Convention who are, you know, really, really feeling the call and really wanting to get into, to, um, to leadership. And that's, I mean, that's where this kind of topic is emerging is, uh, the, the mm-hmm. denomination is pushing back against women who are being empowered to come to up into ministry. Come into so, leadership. Yeah. Um, so we thought we'd, we'd talk about the role of women in church leadership and preaching and sounds um, good to me. Uh, and kind of give you um, well, so what basically their theology now obviously folks who adhere to this theology would not say it's shit house theology it's um, complementarianism right and so let's take a time out there for a second. This is shit house theology per our theological understanding. understanding but let's be honest anybody could do a shit house theology segment on anybody's theology if they disagree with it so okay. to be fair to be fair this is coming from our perspective um and i think you know well i think our perspective is pretty grounded in scripture but then again so do the other side that's right so, so they they ascribe to complementarianism uh todd and i in our denominations the presbyterian church usa and United Methodist Church uh, adhere to egalitarianism. Right. Um, so basically, what that means, complementarianism, is uh, their theology rooted again in Scripture is that God created uh, men and women uh, to complement each other, yeah. both uh, with strengths and that are not necessarily better or worse, but are meant to complement. And here, here's the funny thing is, I don't disagree with that. I think men and women do complement each other. I also think men and men can complement each other, and women and women can complement each other. Uh, not just, I'm sure people, when they hear that, are automatically going down the road of sexuality, but I'm talking about in general. I think yeah. people complement other people because we're all different individuals. I do believe that men and women complement each other. Um, and there, there's no doubt differences between men and women, physiological differences, emotional differences, uh, psychological differences because of the way we're raised, you know, um, some of those are learned differences. Some of those are, you know, born differences, but the problem with that is, um, uh, the problem with that is, is I think is when it jumps from, Hey, men and women can complement each other and do complement each other too because you're on this side of the complementary line and I'm on this uh, side uh, I can do everything and you have to do what I tell you to do because yes. I'm the one who's superior which is generally where this theology goes to in terms of women leadership in the church um, is I'm the male I'm the head of the household I have the authority uh, therefore I preach yeah, that's that's nine times out of ten. That's exactly where where it, it, it goes to. Now, maybe this is simplifying the thought a bit, but uh, but I think the men in men in power, men who have authority, are basically saying that women can't preach because God created us to complement one another, and yet somehow. Um, it's not very 
complimenting <laughs> for women, mm-hmm. <laughs> right? Like, yep. like uh, somehow that means that God created me to be, they wouldn't use the word superior, but they would use the word uh, like God gave me the authority and women should not have authority over men. Uh, in the area of spirituality and religion and, the, you know, in the area of housemaking and raising kids and, you know, that sort of thing, that's where God gifted women. Right. But but honestly, what it really means is let's go back to the 1930s, you know, let's go back when men were the breadwinners, where men were the heads of the household and women did everything men were supposed to do or what everything that men told them to do because um, they were to submit themselves to their husbands. Yeah. Men, <clears throat> men protected and provided for their wives. Wives then protected and provided for the children. Right. Um, that pecking order. That pecking order, that very uh, gender uh, based um, masculine um, yeah. patriarchal. I, I, Hesitate to use the word patriarchal, but the patriarchal layout of the family. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so, where where do our denominations see that as um, misguided, scripturally speaking? I guess before we go into that, Sal, and I'll, I'll let you get into that in a second, but I think the people who hold this view would say, well, look it, Paul said that... Uh, no woman should teach in church and they should remain silent and have their heads covered. Heads covered. Mm-hmm. And this is because Adam was the first created and and Eve was created from Adam. Therefore, Adam is, uh, you know, superior to Eve, so to speak. Mm-hmm. Um, that's the general scriptural mm-hmm. basis, correct? Pretty much. For, was it First Timothy? First, for, yeah, First Timothy, I think. Mm-hmm. Um, and you know, pulling from from, from Genesis, Genesis, made of made of Adam's rib. Yeah, um, that's kind of the basis. Um, we're on the flip side. You, you and I's denomination, the egalitarian denominations, would say that if you if you look at those same letters of Paul, um, when he introduces like Lydia. Mm. In Act is it Acts or Luke? It's Romans. Romans. Yeah, Romans. Though I think she, she may be in other ones, but Romans is where he talks to her. I think she's in Acts too. Cause yeah, she, yeah, she's in Acts, but uh, uh, where where Paul specifically mentions her, it's in Romans. Mm-hmm. The end, um, I believe. Yeah. <clears throat> so Paul mentions several deaconesses and women, uh, women apostles. Um, we also point to uh, in the Gospels uh, who. Uh, well, from our perspective, the first folks to profess the gospel are women. Mary, the Marys. <laughs> the Marys, yeah. I mean, if you're looking at Mark, Matthew, Luke, uh, it's the Marys and the other women who show up at the tomb. If you're specifically looking at uh, John, it's Mary Magdalene who Jesus sends out as the apostle to the apostles. To the apostles. You know, because apostle means to be sent. Yes. So Jesus tells Mary, go. Go and tell tell my brothers. Yeah, tell my brothers that I am coming and I will and I will appear to them. Um, so that he sends her out, aka apostle, to the apostles. Mm-hmm. So she preached the first uh, gospel uh, gospel sermon on resurrection. Yes, yeah, she preached the first gospel. And if women were so inferior to men, why would Jesus ever entrust that that such a vital important message to, to a, a woman? woman. Um, not to mention you have, uh, you know, Deaconess Phoebe, you have Lydia, who Paul was a benefactor of, Mm -hmm. meaning that she supported his ministry. She funded him, AKA woman in power. Mm -hmm. Um, you have, uh, Hunia who is, or Junia cause I'm American, uh, you know, who was an apostle, Mm -hmm. uh, listed as an apostle in Romans. You have, um, Priscilla, who's mentioned before Aquila. And normally when you mentioned uh, people, a couple in order, you mentioned them in the order of their prominence. So why is Priscilla put before her husband in Paul's writings? There are a whole slew of evidences, not to mention the way God used women in authority throughout even the Hebrew scriptures. This isn't even just new to, nope. to the New Testament. I mean, look at Esther. Esther, Ruth. Ruth. Uh, yeah. Um, 
uh, you know, uh, Rahab. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, like so these these women that did some pretty risky things. Even Sarah, Sarah. even Sarah. When you look at certain points uh, in in Sarah's Sarah's uh, uh, role. So I mean, like you look at like the heroines of the Old Testament, and you look at the the heroines of the New Testament, and you've got a pretty substantial case that that God didn't just intend men to be His messengers. Mm. Um, so. So yeah, I think it's important that male pastors like Todd and I, and I think uh, it's been some one of your friends, yep, Drew, Drew. Yep. Uh, shared it as well. If we're going to be male pastors, we need to lift up the importance of women's leadership in uh, preaching. And I know for me, in the Presbyterian Church, women... Uh, gained the right to be ordained in 1950. It's either 54 or 56. It's right around the time as the Methodist Church. And the, yeah, the Methodist Church was the early 50s. It was in the 50s. Yeah. 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 Um, my spiritual formation as a teenager was at the preaching of women. Mm. Mm. Women and gay men. No. <laughs> so. Um, back to Pride Month we are. Back to Pride Month. So, uh, okay. Uh, so... My, ironically, you know, my pastors growing up were all men growing up. Uh, but my mom is the reason I sit across from you today as a minister. My mom really, like, really made us, and I say made us, uh, though I enjoyed it uh, looking back, but, but really made sure that we had a spiritual foundation. She led Bible studies. She, uh, if it weren't for my mom... And her gr- grounded Christian faith, I would not be sitting here today. Mm-hmm. And then, if when I when I first came back into the church, it was a woman pastor I came back into, and she helped further affirm my call as a pastor. So, mm-hmm. uh, by the time she left, it wasn't that long after, but by the time she left, I knew I needed to answer my call, which was mm-hmm. a yep. bundle of joy for the next pastor coming in. I'm sure. <laughs> but <laughs> yeah, my mother as well to. Uh... You know, while she didn't intentionally uh, seek out to foster and take me to church, she did foster spirituality and uh, took me to the Presbyterian Church when my friend was joining confirmation classes. Said, "Do you want to do it?" I said, "Okay." Yeah. Um, and then my ordination. Uh, the two people that gave me my charge uh, for my ministry was the female pastor that I was a youth pastor under, and then my mom. Yeah, and yeah. she said, "Yeah, she gave me three very solid things to do in my ministry: uh, to listen, to learn, and to love." Absolutely. And as for what Paul allegedly <laughs> allegedly says in First Timothy, and I say allegedly because there's a lot of um, biblical scholarship around the fact that Paul may not have been the author of all of those letters. He was an author of the majority of them. Mm -hmm. Uh, But when you look at uh, his in Galatians where he says, there's neither Jew nor Greek, there's neither free nor slave, there's neither male and female, we're all one in Christ Jesus. You look at how he he names certain women leaders, uh, deaconesses and apostles and and, and contributors to the church, uh, funders to the church. You look at uh, his respect of women overall in in the letters we know to be Paul's. It becomes quite inconsistent with the letters that then say, "Yeah, but I prohibit them to have anything yeah. to do with the church." Yeah. And even if he did write it, we also don't know the context going on with Timothy. You know, was it was it all women in general, or was it? Uh, I mean, it seems like it's all women in general. Where he says, "I do not permit women to teach men." At the same time. Um, what was the context going on in that church? Maybe there were disruptive people uh, challenging the authority of those who were in leadership in a, in, in a negative way. I don't know what the context was to that. But my guess was Paul probably didn't write it. And it was uh, the Christians were constantly under attack um, by, by the, the Roman authorities saying, you're trying to upset the, the order, the societal order. And they were like, no, we're not. We're not trying to upset anything. Uh, we, we don't permit women to teach. We, we're not trying to, you know, we, we just want, you know, faithfulness to Christ. Um, that seems to be what was going on there. Um, you know, but regardless, uh, 
there's far much there's far more of a case to be made for women in ministry than there is for women not in ministry. Mm-hmm. I mean, you have one like paragraph in First Timothy, and then you have the rest of what Paul has to say. <laughs> right. But then, and, and yet in Timothy, and yet in Timothy, it says women, in the same way, women are to be worthy of respect, uh, not malicious talkers, but temperate and trustworthy in everything. So. If they're trustworthy of in everything and worthy of respect, and that's in first, Timothy. and that's in first Timothy. So yeah, again, the, you know, there there's there could be a missing context there's there. A context that we're yeah. not seeing. Um, but that but unfortunately, those words have done much damage to women who have been trying to get into ministry. So overall, from Sal and my perspective, this is shit house theology. theology. So uh, women. Uh, belong in ministry they have much to add and contribute to ministry and um and it's time i think high time that men you know stop feeling threatened by women and rather see them as partners yeah, partners yeah for they're sure. so complimentary <laughs> yeah. let them compliment let them compliment us <laughs> in leadership <laughs> right right yep. so um <laughs> okay all right well where does that bring us, Sal? That brings us to our one-year anniversary celebration. Woo! Yay! Yay! All right. Um, so I think at this point we're gonna we're gonna let you uh, we're gonna take a pause here and let you listen to our year's zaniest party on John cast moments. moments. So check this out. Take a listen. Party on, Todd. Party on, Sal. Rock on. Rock on. Well, welcome, fellow Party on Johncasters, to another episode of the Party on Johncast. Where, where are we? Oh, oh, my goodness. I think we are recording inside of a tattoo shop by the name of Freebird. Freebird, man. Todd has his own podcast that he has as part of his church ministry. Uh, so we've done a, a couple special episodes. Yeah. Very special episodes. They're always special with you yes, on it, Sal. They are. Uh, <laughs> special ed. Spe- <laughs> um, remember, ju- juvenile minds here. Yeah, and once Sal brought that idea up to me, the first reaction, and Sal can attest to this, the first reaction to doing this podcast was, Whoa! Whoa righteous, righteous, most, righteous, excellent, most excellent, excellent Theophilus! Theophilus. So, uh... <laughs> we literally said that in... At the same time. Okay, so now we're going to move on to our favorite Halloween slash horror movies. So if you're offended by the word shit, we're really... Sorry about if that. If you're insulted by the word <laughs> shit, you can. <laughs> wow. Wow. And uh, I love his music, and we're just super stoked to have him here on the show with us. Say hi, Adam. Hey, guys. Hey, Thanks, hey. For, having, thanks for having me. Um, let's see. One interesting thing about myself. Some people do think it's interesting that I, I own a car wash. <laughs> yes, you do. <laughs> This is a family-friendly podcast, right? Oh. Return what I say. Okay. Oh, of course. <laughs> For the most part. <laughs> Met Todd at Drew Theological School. Was, was that before or after? Uh... <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> I think I can read your mind. <laughs> that was before, during, and after. <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's uh, that's quite the year. (laughs) (laughs) You said a swear word. I did. (laughs) You you rock. All right. That was a pretty. uh, That's. You don't think of that being a year like a a year. It doesn't seem like it's been a year. It it really it really kind of flashed before our eyes. I mean, there's. A lot that goes into these, you know. We, we, you and I spend a lot of time thinking what we're going to talk about. Uh, we, we, uh, oftentimes are are 
trying to, you know, we, we've had guests on. I, our second episode, we had, we had Je- Jeff Finley Jeff on. Finley, yep. And that was a really awesome. Um, that was a good episode. Really good episode. So um, we've had. We've had him. We've had Adam Gilbert, which was rocking. Uh, we had Evan Dodge, which was <laughs> a riot. <laughs> We've had Amanda. We've had Amanda. We've had a lot of guests on. There are more guests to come for sure. For sure. And to think that uh, last year in June, you said to me, "We should really do a podcast." I said, "So let's do it." <laughs> and we, within half an hour, an hour, had the website. Uh, Set up. We had Podbean. You had already started Podbean for your life-giving messages. Yep. Yep. So. Yeah, and and um, yeah, and and I think we both responded. Whoa! <laughs> Righteous, most excellent. <laughs> I think we spent more. We spent more time debating and deliberating on what to call the podcast. <laughs> for sure. Um, uh, yeah. It it really. It really, you know, because I think we spent long and hard on the name, and, and one of the names we were we were kind of wanting to call it was the John Cast. The John Cast. And Rachel, who was here at the time, came in and said, uh, "You might want to rethink that one." That's now that would have fit our shit house theology. It would section. Have totally fit our shit house theology section. Oh, yeah. The John Cast. You know, we with the love of our Johns, and we've discovered that the Johns agree on a lot of stuff, and the Johns probably would have agreed that the John Cast would not be good. Right. So we went with because of our love of Bill and Ted and our love of Wayne's World. We went with the party, party on, on John Cast, Cast, and the Johns agree. The Johns agree. That's a rockin' name. <laughs> so um okay so let me let it let us discuss what our favorite episodes or moments are on the pot on the podcast so far this year this past uh, year the past year that that second episode was a good episode with jeff it was um that was good i really enjoyed uh episode six Mm-hmm. Where we debuted shit house. I just like saying shit house theology. <laughs> where we debuted our shit house theology segment, which you heard a little bit of in our zaniest segment. Yeah, um, well, you heard the best part of it. The best part of it, <laughs> where we bleep Sal out. We're gonna bleep me out too, evidently throughout this episode. <laughs> Sal, um, you're rubbing off on me. I am. I am the uh, the the sailor chaplain. I do that. Um, Monkey was a fun episode. That was our probably our most challenging episode. That was our most challenging episode. So uh, let's talk about that because that's that's a little inside dirt that most people don't don't know. Yeah, that was that that was definitely a learning curve for us. We learned what how not to do a podcast, and um, we recorded that. So Sal and I were at my house that night, um, and we had all sorts of trouble. We were getting feedback because we were recording that. At, Adam joined us uh, yeah. remotely via yeah, Facebook. Facebook, and so we were getting feedback uh, because he, the three mic, the three mics, well, the Facebook mics and the and, and the microphone for the podcast were totally feeding off of each other, and so finally we just dealt with it. We're like, okay, we're going to hear an echo. There's a delay. Whatever, we'll just go with it because uh, it's all recording onto the to the computer, and and of course uh, uh, Adam was recording on to his iPhone. iPhone. Um, so we, we do this perfectly awesome uh, episode and it really felt good at the end. I was mm-hmm. like, this is, this is great. And then I hear, uh, guys, guys. and I'm like, uh Oh, what's up, Adam? He's like, yeah, it stopped recording after 40 minutes. <laughs> if you recall, that was like an hour um, and something and something minute episode. <laughs> so it was late. He had to go out to eat with his family and we're like, um, okay, want to record in a week now we came back and recorded and i think it was only a day or two before it was actually going to drop it. and so we came back and recorded so we start the episode off i'm drinking ardbeg you're drinking and some a, presbyterian a, cocktail a presbyterian which is uh scotch and uh ginger uh, ginger ale and and uh and 
Adam's drinking like dirty bastard dirty or bastard. something like that. So beer. You can hear my ice <laughs> shingling around the whole episode. Yeah. 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 I was like, and so we had to go back a week later and we're drinking like water. Mm-hmm. Yeah, <laughs> because we were, you know, so but so it, it synced up pretty well, though. Yeah, so that was where I really learned uh, that I could push my editing capabilities to the max and mm-hmm. make it sound seamless. And yep. I, I'd be hard pressed to think anybody even knew that that was recorded over anyone, two weeks. I don't think so. And a little, uh, a little behind the scenes info that that episode landed me on the couch for the weekend. <laughs> <laughs> now uh, you're really spilling the dirt. Now I'm really. You might be dirt. on the couch again, pal. <laughs> I might. Although she knows I'm. Gonna, she knows we're recording now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, there was a miscommunication with Allison and I, and so <laughs> kind of forgot to tell her when I was leaving. Yeah, yeah. I think my response to you was, I was like, yeah, it's kind of good to text people that you're going to be late. <laughs> so I, I stood up for you, Allison. That's the end. Moral of the story. But. <laughs> but it turned out to be a good episode. Yeah. Uh, dealt with it. And and then, yeah, so those were some fun episodes. They were it was, uh, fun episodes. Um, <laughs> and, of course, um, I really enjoyed uh, having uh, my my good friend, uh, uh, the Reverend, uh, soon to be uh, in a year or so, uh, the Reverend Dr. Evan Roars Dodge on, and he's, of course, the co-host, along with our buddy uh, Drew. Drew, on the God and Whiskey podcast. Um, but he came on to help us finish probably our weightiest series throughout the year, which was on on Grace. That that and Totes Depraved. We'll call the, the Grace one weightier because it took three episodes as opposed mm-hmm. to one. But those were our most theologically in-depth uh, episodes, and so... Uh, uh, Evan came on and re- really helped lighten up the the topic. Um, mm-hmm. We really had fun at Serene Jones's expense. I, I think her name rhymes with M- M- Mean Jones. <laughs> <laughs> that was the best line of that episode. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I I said r- rhymes with Serene Jones. Oh, I see Mean Jones. <laughs> uh, and uh, you know, like anytime you get, uh, I mean, Sal. Anytime you get Sal and I in a room, you better watch out. But anytime you get uh, uh, Sal, Evan, and I in a room, it was yep. all hell broke loose. It was a very good, uh, very good energy that episode and we drank the best coffee to date on that episode and that was bones uh coffee company's bourbon barrel aged coffee done in a french press done in a french press that that was that was the pinnacle of coffees Mm -hmm. um and uh i really dug um well, I, I'm a Halloween nut, so I really liked our Halloween episode, which was also in that, that zanius segment. Uh, I like when – what I like about our show is we do tackle some weighty topics, and that's important from time to time. But overall, we're just we're just zany and fun, and we, you know, we throw theology hopefully in a way that's natural, um, in a way that like raises your understanding of issues but doesn't – bog you down and bore you down mm-hmm. uh, uh you know we're not dumbing down but we're not boring you either um but i also enjoyed having amanda on uh and actually going to uh the tattoo shop and that setting a, up there that was the most professional setup we had yes that we was had a, a good boom, setup. boom mic stand and <laughs> yeah another that was another uh testament to your editing editing skills there oh, yeah you know you know the 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 story about that, and you probably noticed a bit on this one, um, when we were originally sitting there, uh, you know, I can hear things, and I, I normally wear earphones, so I can hear what's going through, um, and I noticed some way through that that um, Amanda really wasn't coming through at all. You and I were coming through fine. So at some point, I asked Amanda just to shift over more towards Sal. Sal moved over a little bit, and then... Amanda and Sal were like right on the mic and I was a little bit off the mic, but my voice is so quiet that you heard me anyway. Mm -hmm. Um, so, so then we were in the right position. Um, so that, that was a challenging episode because in order to make Amanda's voice at a level where people could somewhat comfortably hear her, uh, I had to like raise those levels up and then lower our levels. And it was interesting. Um, but I think in the end it it came out pretty, pretty well, pretty well. Yeah. That was another good episode. And the topic, uh, I've heard, I've actually had people comment back to me about, like, I've never thought of tattooing yeah, that way before. 
change some people's perspectives. Yeah. So yeah. So I that those would be my favorite uh, episodes. Yep. Um, they were good. Yeah. Yeah. It's so. been a it's been a fun a fun bunch of episodes, and I mean we um, we've done. A Holy Week series, which was that was, was awesome. fun to do. Yeah, that was really um, cool. Yeah, so we'll probably do uh, do some uh, some episodes like that again. I would imagine. Yeah, and they were shorter. They, shorter. they were just kind of like like meditative, like devotions. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. Yeah, that was that was really interesting, and that is another feat of editing. Um, not because I mean we re- we did record that remotely. Mm-hmm. Um, and you can hear that in the different, um, like the the re, the, the yeah, uh, acoustics are different when, like with Sal's voice versus mine because we're recording in different rooms. But we actually got the remote recording down, down. a bit, yep. uh, and so so like that was an easier edit, but with that than the one with Adam. But that right. said, um, we recorded that. How long did that take us? Like hour and a half hour and a half uh and then we broke it up into the individual segments yeah well it took us about an hour and a half and then an hour and a half again because we messed up somehow oh somehow what happened with that it, oh oh the, the file oh, was corrupted because i tr- we try yeah my file got corrupted yeah so we recorded it for an hour and a half my file was totes depraved <laughs> but, but sal's file is totes depraved and it's <laughs> Kind of like this. And I'm like, uh, Sal, it's yeah. like, I, I know it's like 12 o'clock, but uh, we really need to sit down and record this. So we were up to like 2, 2 a.m. that morning, one thirty two. Yeah. And uh, we, in this process, I did buy my own mic. So maybe at some point in the next year, we'll, we'll tweak and do some testing and actually record two mics. I mean, that's uh, something I would like to try to do again so that we are a little more consistent in our sound levels yeah and that that the difficult thing with that is um when the problem with with two mics is that both mics are recording at the same time in the same room so you're picking up both voices and right. then it doubles and there's up. a w- and apparently there's a way to to supposedly there's a way to, to do to that, it's just, that but it's a matter of figuring it out well if you can record it into the same computer at the same time, it won't matter because it'll be perfectly lined yeah. up. And that's how that's we have that's instructions what, how to do that. Yeah. We just have to try it. And that's what we're going to try to do because that would be awesome. Um, what was not awesome was recording with two mics in the same room and me having to go in and actually line it up. And of course, they're recording at two different speeds because mm-hmm. uh, they're on two different computers. So there's these are all of the backside challenging things of editing and putting a podcast together that you might not realize go into it. You, you just hear it as two people talking. Uh, but there's a lot of work that goes behind it. Um, and we thought we'd you know discuss some of that because it, it is interesting, um, especially for those who've never done this sort of thing before. Uh, but lumps, bruises, sweat, blood, tears... You know, all aside, there is nothing more worth it than I think this than than the the finished result of the party on John Cast throughout this year. I think it's yep. been an awesome ride. We've gotten some great feedback, so send us some feedback. Uh, we know that you're listening to it, so keep listening. Keep listening, um, and and you know, we're still waiting, still waiting for our first. Um, Patreon, you know, we know you're out there. We know you love our show. We know that you can afford, at the very least, two dollars a month. Um, And uh, you know, if that means you you make your own coffee on Saturday, uh, you know, once a month. Mm -hmm. (laughs) You you skip one visit to Dunkin' Donuts or Starbucks a month, (laughs) a month to support us. We would love it. I mean, that would go towards we. You just heard us explain that we have microphones that we've purchased. We have it's, hosting website hosting fees we have to pay. We have podcast it, hosting fees we have to pay. It adds up. It and definitely this, adds this up. This is not an official ministry of our per- respective uh, placements. This is a ministry of passion and, passion and friendship. So, yep. um, and we do love you guys, our listeners. Uh, we appreciate you listening to us. 
and uh, what, you know whether you support us or not, but we do hope you'll consider supporting us. And there are a couple ways to do that. Again, there's our Patreon account. There are different tiers uh, starting at $2 a month. There are different tiers, and you get different things for those tiers. Um, and they're awesome. I think we've got some really awesome things lined up. Mm-hmm. I mean, who doesn't want a Party on John Magnet? Matt Car Magnet or Car Magnet. Party on John... Uh, phone case or t-shirt which you can get through the life giving water swag store mm-hmm. uh, so that's another way you can support us you can go on if you if you're not wanting to make a monthly commitment you can go on and purchase, purchase. a one you know one time you know purchase a mug or a, a case or a t-shirt or, yeah. yeah but the uh, you do if you're a, or pa- a theme song or a theme song <laughs> the uh, but the patrons on patreon do get uh, at a certain fee a level get the car magnet you get access to behind the scenes YouTube video. You get bonus content. You get also percentages off the Life Giving Water swag store. Uh, depending on what what level you're at, you'll either get fifteen or I think it's no, it's ten or twenty percent off depending on the level for the two upper tiers. Mm-hmm. So lots to have there, folks, and uh, you're supporting uh, a good cause um, because this this really gets the good news out uh in a zany unique way (laughs) well um i think that sums up our one year anniversary uh celebratory episode of the party on john cast awesome so again check out our episode notes check out the links we put there uh support us in the various ways you can the best way you can support us and it's for free is by rating us and yeah. liking and uh, reviewing us on whatever you listen to us on, whether it be iTunes, Google Play Music, Spotify, or uh, even Podbean. Podbean. Yep. Um, so definitely do that. Do that. And the more reviews and, and support we get that way, the more we are visible, especially for Apple iTunes podcasts. Yeah, it bumps us up on Bump, the list. Bumps us up, makes us accessible to more people. So if we can get this, if we can get the message of, uh, Music, coffee, and Christ to the world. <laughs> we uh, we yeah. would love that. Yeah, uh, absolutely. And of course, uh, we we put Christ at the top of that list, but that's the order we go in on the show. Yep. So, <laughs> so we save the best for last. The best for last. But uh, but yeah, that that's important that you do that. So check us out, uh, support us, and as always, my friends, be excellent to each other, and don't be a jerk. Amen.